Thank you for your interest in Kalina Cycle Technology. This video will guide you through the Geothermal Kalina Cycle Power Plant located in Unterhaching, Germany, a suburb of Munich. The Unterhaching Kalina Cycle Power Plant produces 3.4 megawatts of electricity and 38 megawatts of thermal power distributed through a district heating system to thousands of homes. This plant is powered entirely by the Earth's heat in a zero-emission, sustainable, renewable geothermal system. In 2004, Geothermy Unterhaking, the plant's developers, drilled a 3,400-meter well to tap into a hot aquifer providing 150 liters per second of 123 degrees Celsius water called geothermal brine for the plant. The Kalina cycle process begins with the hot geothermal brine entering the power plant through a large insulated pipe. As we tour the facility, please remember that Kalina cycle is a closed loop process that completes the same set of processes continuously without emission to the outside world. The brine's heat is harnessed in the plant to make electricity and hot water before returning to the aquifer for reheating, thus recharging and sustaining the underground system. Once inside the plant, the geothermal brine flows up to the system's first heat exchanger called an evaporator. The evaporator transfers heat in the geothermal brine into a cooler ammonia water mixture. Inside the evaporator, the geothermal brine flows between a series of plates. A mixture of pure ammonia and water is also flowing through a series of plates alternating with the brine. The ammonia water mixture and geothermal brine flow on the opposite sides of the plates to exchange heat through the plates. Without ever contacting or mixing with the brine, the ammonia water receives heat from the brine and begins to boil. At this point, the brine has done its work and can be returned to the earth for reheating through the injection well. Now we will focus on the ammonia water mixture called the working fluid, which has been boiled to a high pressure vapor. This vapor now moves out of the evaporator and passes through a new piece of hardware called a separator. The purpose of the separator is to ensure that any remaining unboiled liquid is separated from the ammonia water vapor. The separator accomplishes this by passing the working fluid through a complex pathway that effectively strains droplets out of the vapor. The pure vapor then leaves the separator and moves down to the turbine. Note that the working fluid's mixture of ammonia and water is a core innovation in the Kalina cycle and is a main part of the reason that Kalina cycle power systems can generate up to 50% more power than alternative technologies like organic ranking or steam ranking. Inside the turbine, the high pressure vapor expands while forcing the turbine to spin at over 13,000 revolutions per minute. This process causes the vapor's pressure to drop and also results in a temperature drop from 120 to 85 degrees Celsius. The spinning turbine is attached to a generator through a gearbox. As the generator's dynamo spins, it creates electricity, which is sent through wires to the national electrical grid. The plant is less than one kilometer from apartment buildings, a gas station, restaurants, small farms, a major highway, and shopping areas. Clearly, Kalina Cycle Technology has passed Germany's rigorous health, safety, and noise regulations and has become an integral part of the Unterhaching community. The cooled vapor now leaves the turbine and enters the cooling stage of the Kalina cycle, the last stage of our closed loop process. The vapor gushes upstairs to another heat exchanger called the recuperator, where it gives up more of its heat. Here in the recuperator, the hot vapor leaving the turbine essentially preheats the fluid going back to the evaporator, thus boosting efficiency and conserving energy. Finally, the vapor flows to a final heat exchanger called the condenser, which acts like the evaporator, but in reverse. The condenser is filled with cold water supplied by a cooling tower. This drops the temperature of the working fluid, condensing most of that working fluid from vapor to liquid. At this point, we can pump the working fluid back through the recuperator to the evaporator, which begins the closed loop process again. 
You will have noticed that the Kalina cycle is a completely closed loop system and no ammonia is ever released to the environment. In the case of an accidental release, ammonia is vented through pipes to a large tank of water where it is absorbed and contained. Ammonia is not a greenhouse gas or an ozone depleting chemical and in fact the ammonia water mixture is often sold as a fertilizer. Now you have seen the electricity generating portion of the Kalina Cycle Power Plant in Unterhaching, Germany. This facility also diverts a significant portion of its geothermal heat into the town's district heating system, which heats fresh water and pumps the hot water directly into thousands of homes throughout the town. It is important to note that Kalina Cycle technology can be used to harness a wide variety of heat sources, not just geothermal heat. Hot exhaust liquids and gases from cement manufacturing, steel mills, petrochemical refineries, glass kilns, and a wide variety of other industrial processes, including existing power plants themselves, can also be used to produce power from the Kalina cycle process, thus greatly increasing the efficiency of many industrial facilities. Kalina cycle power plants have been built for geothermal and industrial heat around the world.